Well, for those that don't know me, I'm Juan. I'm working uh, at ECOS at, in Ljubljana at NIP, and I'm doing my PhD at the moment. But today I'm going to talk about my master thesis. Um, my master thesis was about Orientus Isidae, and I titled this presentation Bolero by Leaf Hoppers, the Complex Reproductive Strategy of Orientus Isidae. Um, this could be a normal presentation where I introduce you the whole reproductive behavior of this insect, and it will be, but I'm going to have the help of someone else for this. Uh, a musician, Maurice Ravel, one very famous French composer, which has uh, one piece that probably most of you know, um, which is Bolero, which sounds more or less like this. Not more or less, sounds like this. Okay, so I hope this melody is familiar to most of you. Mm, in my work, I saw that Orientus Isidae had some kind of structure very similar to Bolero. And here is an example of uh, Orientus Isidae mating behavior. Okay, and you may say, okay, this doesn't sound at all like Bolero, and you are right, it doesn't sound at all like Bolero, but hopefully at the end of this presentation, I will show you that they share uh, very unique characteristics, both of these pieces. One is created by a human, a composer, and the other is just the fruit of work of years and years of evolution in this little insect. So, without any more... Introduction, let's go with Orientus, Orientus Isidae. Orientus Isidae, uh, it's a leafhopper, originally from Japan, that is invasive species in many countries. Uh, right now it's spread almost all over Europe. It's a highly polyphagous insect. It fits in many different plants, although it has a preference for willows. Uh, it has been shown that this insect is a vector of a plant disease, Flavescens dore, which I will explain in my next slide. And this, this disease is especially, especially important for vineyards in Europe. And the presence of this insect in vineyards has been confirmed already. So it's a potential pest. Flavescens dore is a disease that affects a wide range of plants, but in, for us humans, it's very important, especially economically speaking, with vineyards, because when this disease infects the vines, uh, there is not much else to do. There is no cure still for it, and uh, the plant eventually will, will wilt and die, and the only uh, one, the most viable solutions that we have to control this disease is basically to control the vector, that transmits these diseases that are also a big variety of insects, but most of them in the leafhopper family. Uh, so control the vector of the disease or directly unroot and burn all the plant material. So <clears throat> since uh, Orientus uh, has uh, the potential of transmitting this disease to the plants, Mm, the objective of the research that we did for my master thesis was this characterization of the mating behavior to obtain detailed knowledge uh, to possibly develop some effective control strategies for this insect. Um, first, we capture all the insects that we needed in the field. And our first experimental setup was something, it looks something like this. We, we attached some willow leaves inside a petri dish and to these these willow leaves were connected to a mini shaker where we will transmit different playbacks of signals that we record of the insects um yeah we will we introduce the insects either individually or in couples on this uh, setup the first thing the first question that came to our mind is are these insects 
do they emit spontaneous signals? We know by other works that uh, leaf hoppers, especially males, are able to uh, emit spontaneous signals that are basically to call for females. So my first uh, question was that, and what I did was to introduce several, I mean, single males into this setup and record for some time to see if they would emit any signal. And they did, it sounded something like this. So males will emit this signal, and which I call male calling phrase. Uh, the signal is composed by several drumming, a drumming sequence at the beginning, and then different amount of uh, harmonic pulses. Males would sing this uh, calling phrase and then wait and to see if there was something going on. In nature, we can hypothesize that males would basically sing this and then if no female answers, jump to another plant and uh, repeat it, emit this signal again. So this is the male calling phrase, and the next thing we did was to actually to put females also in this setup, single females to see if they emitted signals, and they also did. These are female pulses that they emitted by themselves without any kind of stimulation. It was not not all the females, although most of the males emitted the male calling phrase, only some females, uh, less than half of them emitted spontaneous signals. Um, we can see here, yeah, the, the signals that they emit are very harmonic pulses. Um, the next part that we did was uh, to actually put the females, individual females, and uh, play a playback for them of the male calling phrase to see if they would react to it. And here we can hear it. So as, as you can hear, we looped the male calling phrase and we repeat it every amount of seconds and the, we can see here the, the pulses of the female answering always after the male pulse in a short window after the male pulse. This will be very important later on during the, the mating behavior, the courtship. And so females always answer in the same spot and all the females, individual females that I tried responded to, to this. Um, okay, so those were our preliminary experiments and then we wanted to study the mating behavior. So we introduced couples into our setup and recorded for uh, for as long as they needed to start singing. If they wouldn't start singing by themselves, I would stimulate them by playing a playback of the male calling phrase and then they will start. To Okay, mating behavior on this insect is a bit complicated, so Starting from the bottom up, what we will be listening are different signals that the males are producing. These signals can be produced, can be grouped into phrases. And as we will see later, some phrases are repeated many times among the whole mating behavior. So different signals and phrases can be combined into a cycle. Then this cycle is repeated for a certain amount of times. Different cycles will make a phase and different phases, three phases only, will make the mating behavior of Orientus Isidae. So from bottom up, this is how it will be. Uh, a more simple representation of all of this is just showing the phases. So Orientus Isidae has three phases during this mating behavior, the recognition duet, the courtship that can be divided into early and late, and a last phase that is called wings. Uh, let's start with the recognition duet. The recognition duet is when, when the males emit their calling phrase and the female will answer to it. Here we have an example. So as we could hear, um, there is uh, the, the beginning 
uh, at the beginning of this cycle. As I said before, a cycle in music terms, it, this will be a bar, a musical bar. So a cycle would be, um, it will be characterized but by these signals that we can find at the end of it. This is what I call end of cycle phrase that will be appearing always at the end of the cycle. The male will be doing this. As we can see, we can at the beginning, we have the male calling phrase starting with the drummings and the female pulses appear there. And then there is a duet, an exchange of pulses between the male and the female. We can see uh, the little male pulses here. We also notice that the moment the female answer, male reduce the volume, the amplitude of their pulses. Maybe this is a strategy just to avoid being heard by other possible animals, predators or rivals. So there is an exchange between pulse, uh, between the male and the female of pulses. And at the end, this male will always make this end of cycle phrase that we see in the circle. The end of cycle phrase is composed by several signals. Here we can see a drum sequence a male pulse that we heard before, and then a new harmonic signal that I call whistle, and then a certain number of uh, abdomen hits. I call them abdomen hits because while observing, while observing this behavior, I noticed that the males would move the abdomen right in these bumps that we can hear at the end. Number of bumps of abdomen hits is not fixed. Uh, males would change between one, four, during every cycle would have different amount of these kids. So that's how it sounds. Um, so then in the recognition duet, the first cycle, the first amount of signals that we can hear would sound more or less like this. This is like a bar, a musical bar, the first one. And as we can see, calling phrase, exchange of pulses between male and female, and then the end of cycle phrase. The next cycles of this first phase of the recognition duet won't have any more the male calling phrase, but it will be just the exchange. And we can see already that there are some other signals appear here, some drumming. Um, but it's characteristic again that the end of cycle phrase is there. So after the first cycle uh, in the recognition duet, the next ones won't have the male calling phrase anymore, but they will have still the same structure of exchanging pulses between them and the end of cycle phrase. The, this will go on for a certain amount of cycles. The, that could be between 2 and 11 in the trials I did. And at the end, it was also characteristic that in the last cycle, there was no female answer. Um, so as we can see where the female uh, pulse should be, there is now just a pausa. There is no, the, the female is not answering and this would trigger what the last cycle of this first recognition do it. We can see also that there is some drumming uh, going on and this is already where I'm going to start introducing Bolero into this presentation. This is the beginning of our song. As in Bolero, the drumming starts at the very beginning. There is no more instruments. And this is the introduction to uh, the grand masterpiece of Orientus. Uh, so after this last cycle, where the female doesn't answer anymore, uh, it triggers the next phase, which will be the courtship. Here I have a, a screen that displays a whole, the whole sound wave of a whole mating behavior of, of one of the couples I tested, and I mark in different colors the different phases. Uh, the, as you can see, there are little blue bars separating. This is a cycle. So as we can see, there, there are different number of cycles in every phase. What we listen now is the recognition duet, just the very beginning. Then uh, when the female doesn't answer, it triggers the next part of the mating behavior, the second phase, courtship, that can, as I said before, can be divided in early and late courtship. So first in early courtship, in early courtship sounds like this. OK, 
Okay, so we see already some new signals here that weren't before in the uh, recognition duet, but it still is characteristic that the end of cycle phrase is there. The, these new signals are marked with the arrows in black and white, I, in red and black, sorry. And the, there is no female here. Male is singing alone and is displaying all he has. And the next, uh, uh, the signals, the new signals uh, can be seen here in a bit more detail, which I call crackle and rattle. It was my first big, uh, ex uh, I mean, work in science and the the choice of words, well, it's a, it's a bit, <laughs> you will see how it goes. So rattle and crackle appear already in the early courtship. I could I I noticed that already in the in the last cycles of the recognition duet you could see some rattle and crackle signals but these signals are mainly uh, they always appear in the early courtship. So uh, Orientus male is making these new signals and it goes on for a certain number of cycles. So this that we hear it's uh, repeated over and over, over cycles in this phase in early courtship. It's repeated once and again and again. Male is singing alone and is repeating the same theme. Like in bolero, we can see. We can see. So we have our theme. We have a theme that is repeated all over the our song, our mating behavior. Theme A, because for those of you that know Bolero, this piece, there is another theme later. So in this early courtship, the male is singing along uh, his theme. <laughs> um, it repeats for a certain number of cycles as well. Uh, it variates between 12 and 37. And in this early courtship ends the moment that the female answers again. So the male has been singing along for a certain number of cycles. And then at some point the female answers. And it sounds like this. Okay. So we have, again, the structure of a cycle. We have the signals that we saw before, but there is now some female answers here. There are female answers always in the same window after the male pulses. We can also see the end of cycle phrase, or at least some of the signals that we saw before. We see the drumming, we see the pulse, we see the whistle, but there is something else. There is something new that we will check now later. So we have, we have an, the moment this the moment the female answers the male engage into this new signal that we see at the end and they sing together for a certain number of cycles again they they repeat this motif once and again and again but it's different from the one before it's a different theme so we have the theme b of our piece We have theme B, which will be repeated again for a certain number of cycles. And this, in the end of cycle phrase that we see here, there is something new, <laughs> which I call the excitement signal, because the male only emitted the moment the female answer. Um, it sounds like this. So in the late courtship, the moment the female answers, this signal appears all the time. The, the end of cycle phrase changes towards the end, doesn't appear anymore, only appears this. And this signal is made also uh, in combination of two different pulses at high speed. And I could, this this may be uh, a bit of subjective, but 
yeah, I call it excitement because towards the end of the mating behavior, the signal felt stronger and longer. It, it really feel like the, the insect was getting ready. Um, so we have these new signals at this new theme going on in what we call the late courtship. The late courtship, also number of cycles that we could find there was between three and 44. So it's also highly variable, but all of them had the characteristic that the female is answering and is singing with the male. And after this late courtship, there is the last phase that we uh, have that is I call wings phase and I go <laughs> wings phase for some reason. Okay, so this this phase is very particular. It's the shortest of all of them. There are, there is one cycle. There is no repetition. There is one cycle, and this is right before mating. As we can see here, the, we see the end of cycle phase from the late courtship, and then the the male basically flaps his wings, and in between these flappings, he he emits two male pulses, and then at the end they mate. We can see this in a video. And they mate. So basically, we have been building up a different a series of repetitions of, of this song of Oriental Sicidae that that have been leading to this final moment, to this explosion, right? Like Ravel, exactly like Ravel. We are gonna see the same video, but with the orchestra in the background. So we have the coda of our song, exactly like Ravel, it comes to an end, to an explosive end. I'm very sorry for the audio quality. I tried to fix it for an hour and it didn't work, but this this was the explosion. But yeah, we have the last phase, the, the coda of our piece. So we, have, we can see here now a whole picture of the mating behavior of Oriental Sicidae. As we saw before, there is a recognition duet at the very beginning, courtship divided in early and late. Courtship is the longest phase of the three of them, and then wings is the shortest. It just lasts one cycle. I wanted to show you also the same, but with Ravel Bolero. So as you can see here, Orientus was a bit more creative and added to the beginning of his composition a recognition duet that Ravel doesn't have. Ravel was playing with two themes that were alternating one and then the other and then one and then the other, while Orientus played the first theme for a lot of times and then the second theme. But both of them, both of these um, pieces are evolving gradually, adding more signals and more power and more volume in case of Ravel uh, towards an explosive ending at a coda, right? Um, there are, at the end, both objectives of these animals, of this human composer of, of Orientus, was the same. Copulation. Well, probably for Ravel wasn't copulation, but it is said that uh, after the first, the piece was aired in Paris for the first time, many girls, many women in the auditorium fainted because it is said also that this, this piece has a lot of sexual character, let's call it that way. Even even more, furthermore, the, I found out that in Spotify in 2012, they did a study where they wanted to check um, what music people listen to while going to bed together. And Ravel, Bolero by Ravel was the third one, which is pretty impressive actually for a classical music piece. So both of these pieces have a lot of sexual power, let's say, for both, <laughs> for both.
but there are more facts about the mating behavior of Orientus. It is forbidden to skip steps. Males cannot go and just sing their recognition duet and then jump into wings and mate. It doesn't work like that, as we can see now. So as we saw here, the male started with the recognition duet, the male calling phrase, the female answer. But then the male localized the female instantly and wanted to mate with her. But the female raised the abdomen and hit the leaf in protest. And after this, male resumed to the normal cycle, went back to the courtship. And at the end, they made it. But yeah, it is forbidden to skip any steps. They need to show exactly how it is. And we also had the question, well, since this insect is a potential pest, um, and we saw already in previous works that uh, interacting with this with species, uh, disrupting their mating behavior is very efficient, like to control pests. Let's say we wanted to study uh, aspects of rivalry in Orientus Isidai. What would happen if we would add another male while a couple is trying to mate? So first, what I did is to put the single males uh, into our setup and play back pieces of the courtship for them. And it saw this. So we see these three signals that look very similar to the female pulse. Um, and it was also placed in the same window where the female poles was supposed to be. So what males were trying to do was to imitate the females. As we can see here, this is live. This is not a playback anymore. It's a live recording with three animals. So rival males are singing where the females should be singing and they are basically masking the female signal. Um, what I could observe is that the male, confused, thinking that the female was there, would go to the other males and then, well, eventually they would get kicked off, kick off the leaf and the other, the rival male would start singing. Basically, it added a lot of confusion to the animals because then the, the original male that was singing thought that the female was somewhere else. Uh, so we saw that there, there, there is some kind of disruption with rivalry here. And there's also something that we observe is that they follow satellite behavior. Satellite behavior, it's a concept that better is sung here in this video. Uh, in the video, we can see three animals. The one on the top is not singing. It's a male that is not singing. Below him, there is a female. And down here on the leaf, there is another male, the male that's been singing for nearly 20 minutes, let's say. So basically the male that was on top of, of the female and mated with her didn't sing at all, but he figured out where the female was and mate with her before the male that was singing for such a long time could reach her. So this was satellite behavior and it was also observed in Orientus Isidai. Um, the possibility that rivalry disruption it's here opens the door to possible control of this pest if it will be needed by basically mm, masking the female answers. If the animals cannot mm, find the female, well, the reproductive success will drop. Um, so yeah, this, this was all the things that we did during this master thesis, during my first contact with biotermology, I must say. And what a contact, because it was fairly hard or <laughs> to, to figure out something out of this mess of signals. But yeah, my conclusions are that this was the first work that gives some insight into the mating behavior of Orientus Isidae. Rivalry interaction opens the possibility for mating disruption strategies. And to date, this is the most complex vibrational behavior observed in an insect.
but I'm happy if someone can change my mind to this statement. Um, so that was my presentation. Uh, thank you all for coming in. I really hope that next time you go to an auditorium or you hear some Bolero, Ravel Bolero, which I encourage you to listen after this. You remember that, well, uh, what came from the mind of an artist in 1938, a masterpiece, also was, uh, this insect was born with it after years and years of evolution. So maybe I managed to associate these two pieces together and next time you listen to Bolero, you remember Orientusicidae and the wonders of that he can make, basically. Um, so yeah, that was all. Thank you all for coming. This is, if you would like to contact me, follow me on Twitter, or if you would like to read the whole thesis, the whole work, you can find it in ResearchGate. Thank you. <laughs>